Today's topic is verbs. As you know, a verb expresses an action. It can also express a state of being. The action can be physical, mental, emotional. So for example, running is a physical action. Thinking is of course a mental action. And um, loving is an emotional action. States of being can include the be verbs, am, is, are, was, were, be, being, and been. They can also include like words like becoming. They can also include words that, um, that are linked with the five senses, like uh, that smells bad. Smells would be a linking verb or a state of being verb. And we'll get back to linking or state of being verbs in a minute. But action verbs can be transitive or intransitive. They, transitive verbs have objects. For example, I threw a ball. Uh, the action is directed from me to the ball. So there's a direction of action toward an object. Um, they can be transitive or intransitive. Intransitive verbs have no objects. She always talks. The talking is not directed at anything or anyone. In fact, the word talks, I believe, is always intransitive. Um, you could say she always talks to me, but still there's no object. She doesn't talk me. See what I mean? Um, some can either be transitive or intransitive. For example, the word left can be either transitive or intransitive. I can say he left, period. And that's a complete sentence. We know he left. Or I can say he left the room. And now the action of leaving is directed toward the room. And we know where he left. It's a better sentence in most cases. Um, state of being verbs are called linking verbs because they link or connect the subject to a noun or adjective in the predicate. For example, a tomato is a fruit. So the word fruit is linked with the word tomato. In this case, it renames it or identifies it um, as a fruit. Another example, I feel lonely. The word lonely is an adjective and there's nothing there for it to describe. So it has to describe the subject. And this word feel is the linking verb that links the word lonely to the subject. This pen is his. The word his describes the pen. It tells which pen we're talking about. So it is a pronoun acting as an adjective in that case. Um, and the next thing here says verb phrase. A verb phrase consists of a main verb plus any helping verb or helping verbs that it might have. Helping verbs are also called auxiliary verbs. Um, for example, you could be helping. Helping is the main verb there and could be. Those are also verbs, those two words, but they are helping verbs. They tell the mode of helping. It's a possibility. It's not a reality. They will always be here. So now you can see that sometimes um, verbs can be split by adverbs. Always is not a verb. Um, so if I were to ask you to find the verb phrase, it would be will be. Even though the always is in the middle, it's not part of the verb phrase. And also remember not is an adverb. For example, we didn't go. The verb phrase is did go because not is an adverb. And um, in questions, verb phrases might be split by the subject. For example, have you seen the new movie? The subject you is split, by, uh, splits the verb phrase, have seen. Many questions, but not all questions are like that. Um, Next thing, a verb must agree with its subject and number and person. She have already eaten. I cannot tell you how many times I have seen that kind of sentence in a student's paper. That is incorrect because you need the word has with the subject she. She has already eaten. The good news is that unlike in Spanish, in English, only the third person singular is different. Third person singular, if it's a regular verb anyway, it will end in S. And I'm trying to think of a one that doesn't end in S. Pretty much does end in S. 
Uh, so you need the S ending one to be with the singular third person verb. Remember, third person is whoever or whatever we're talking about. Mm -hmm. um, there's one exception, the verb to be, and it has different forms. So I am, he is, you are, we are, they are, I was, he was, you were, they were, we were. Okay? Um, and I have this written here for you. All of this, all these notes are for you. And it would be good to copy them so you don't have to watch the video in order to see them again. Um, and with compound nouns joined by and, use the plural form. So Raul and Jorge were absent. Now, Jorge is only one person, but since we've got the two of them together, then we need to use the, um, the plural form of the verb. And incorrect to say Raul and Jorge was absent. Not right. With compound nouns joined by or or nor, use the form that agrees with the noun closest to the verb. So in this sentence, either Raul or his sisters are going to be waiting for you. So I don't know whether it's going to be Raul or his sisters, but we need the plural verb because of the word sisters. Now, if I put it in the other way around, um, either Raul's sisters or Raul himself will be waiting for you. Um, and if I wanted to write it like this with the going to form, then Raul would be the one that you have to agree with. So it would be either Raul's sisters or Raul himself is going to be waiting for you because the verb that's closest to Raul 